you're not alone. If you need someone to talk to today, please contact Crisis Services Canada by either calling them at 1-833-456-4566 all hours of the day, or you can text them at 45645 at 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern Time. Remember, you're not alone and Crisis Services Canada is here to help. Welcome to the first installment of the Prospect Show on Amateur Sports TV. I'm your host, Graham Forsyth. Tonight's episode is brought to you by Toby Hockey, Case Financial Group, and Super 8. In the Prospect Show, I'll be speaking to male and female players from around North America and the hockey leagues here. So players from U15, AA, AAA, U18, AA, AAA, high school hockey leagues, the CSSHL, and any other places that these players are making an impact in hockey this season in North America. In tonight's episode, I had a chance to sit down with 2019 second overall WHL Bantam draft pick, Connor Geeky. Connor had a chance to play with the ice for a short amount of time last season. He spent seven games there in the regular season, also played two preseason games with the team as well. I had a chance to speak to Connor about what it was like experiencing WHL hockey last year, what it was like getting drafted into the WHL. I also had a chance to speak to Connor about his time playing for the Yellow Chiefs in Bantam AAA as well as Midget AAA last season where he played for the Yellowhead Chiefs for the majority of the season. And we also dive into his time at the WHL Cup where he represented Team Manitoba and wore the C for that team. That team ended up going to the finals but ultimately lost to Team Saskatchewan. And I also had a chance to speak to him about what it's been like playing for the Burden Oil Capitals this year in the MJHL and what that experience has been like so far. So sit back, relax, enjoy tonight's coverage of the Prospect Show here on Amateur Sports TV with Connor Geeky. Here with Connor Geeky, second overall draft pick in the 2019 WHL Bantam Draft for the Winnipeg Ice from Strathclair, Manitoba, playing for the Verdant Oil Capitals this season. He's wearing number 28, and Connor joins me on this Thursday afternoon here from, I mean, wherever he is. But Connor, thank you so much for joining me today on the first ever edition of the Prospect Show. Not a problem. So we're going to get into a lot of things in this interview today. We're going to talk about your Bantam career with the Yellowhead Chiefs, your journey to getting drafted into the WHL, your season last year with the Midget Yellowhead Chiefs where you played at the U18 level, and just talking about this season as well where you're playing junior A hockey for the Verdon Oil Capitals. So just going back to your time with the Yellowhead Chiefs and Bantam where, I mean, you put up insane numbers especially in your second year I mean leading the whole league in both goals and points but just going back to that first year when it was your first year in that league I mean you put up 38 goals and uh 35 games 30 assists for 68 points and I mean your team you know finished second in the U15 West division and just talking about that season, I mean, it's a while ago now, but looking back at it, what do you remember the most from that season of how you grew as a player throughout that year? Yeah, I mean, uh, we had uh, really good coaches, actually, for that matter. Uh, Mark Watton was my coach, and he obviously played 17 years pro, right? So he, uh, he was a huge factor in that, and our team was, our team was super good. So like you said, that those 68 points don't just come from me, right? There's a lot of... A lot of backdoor tappings and a lot of easy goals, I guess you could say, from just open nets from other guys passing to me. But we had a really good team, and we were a really tight group of guys. So, uh, obviously, second kind of showed where we were at for uh, talent and skill-wise. 
And I mean, you played under a great coach and a great coaching staff around so much talent on that team. I mean, do you think that's one of the big reasons why, you know, you were able to grow throughout your two years there is just being surrounded by that talent and putting you in the right situations? Yeah, 100 percent. I think uh, obviously getting surrounded by all those guys, it's it's huge, not just uh, in game, but uh, in practices, too. Right. Uh Yellowhead's known for uh, having pretty intense practices out here and getting after things and getting right and tense to it. So obviously uh, they're a huge part, a huge part of my success for sure. And I mean, how did you like those practices? Obviously intense, but was it something that you had to take some time to get used to or were you kind of loving it from the very beginning? Uh, I loved it from the start, obviously uh, being the third child in my family here. Uh, you got to grow up with uh the competitive edge and that's kind of how it all started so getting into getting into the practices like that uh huge huge help to me and benefited me so much and half the time i'm the one starting all the crap anyway so it was good awesome and i mean just looking back at that season you're surrounded by great talent i mean your coaching staff is elite as well but you have to be skilled to be able to put up the amount of points that you did in that first year. What area of your game would you say improved the most in that first year? I'd have to say uh, my skating for sure. Obviously, I'm not the not the fastest guy in the world by any means. So that was a huge jump for me just skating wise. And my shot really improved because I was starting to finally uh, grow into my body and be able to put the puck in the back of the net from just about anywhere. So, I mean, growing into your body, did you hit a growth spurt at that age? Uh, I was always uh, tall. I was always, I always kept growing. There was never really a, never really a pause. I think it's, I think it's done now. I kind of hope it is, but uh, I've always been climbing up the height chain. So uh, I wouldn't say a growth spurt by any means, but definitely, uh, definitely bigger than most kids my age. And how was that like just, being able to get used to the, the physique that you had and really improve throughout and really find what works for you in your game in that year. Yeah. Uh, with all the competitiveness and all the, the talent, the league that year had a lot of good teams. Uh, Southwest was one of them, my rival. They were super good. So me just trying to figure everything out, uh, it took a toll on me for sure. Uh, not physically, just mentally, you know, I wasn't, off the start, I wasn't really getting uh, all the points that I'm more st used to having and having all the success I used to have. But obviously, my family is kind of there along the way to just say it's it's going to come. And obviously, it did. And you found consistency throughout that first season. And you had a 21-game point streak after going pointless in four games. And you spoke about how it was kind of tough dealing with the struggles at times, but how are you able to overcome those struggles, not being able to get on the score sheet to be able to put up that monstrous 21 game point streak? Yeah, I think most of it, uh, it comes from just uh, how I kind of took it. I mean, my family, like I said, they're huge supporters. They, uh, they were always there for me, but the biggest thing for me was just kind of off the ice. I never really uh, thought about it too much. And even when I got to the rink, I wouldn't say I thought about it at all. Uh, I'm a guy who doesn't like to look at points or anything. I don't look at my stats. I just kind of go by my business. And obviously, uh, I knew I was getting the chances. So one one game, I thought it might come. And obviously, the 21 games, it did. So. And you also put up great numbers on the power play. 10 power play goals in that season. And how were you able to be such a threat on that power play? Obviously, you didn't put in great situations. But I mean... Your game obviously spoke for itself in that season, being able to be a threat on the power play. Was that something that kind of got some time getting used to and you were able to find your groove on the power play? Or were you a productive power play player at the very beginning? Uh, uh, for myself, I always had a lot of skill. Uh, obviously, it's a huge difference going from uh, peewee to bantam. Uh, so it was, uh, it was an incredible change. But... Uh, other than that, I mean, like you said, getting put in those spots obviously helps out a lot. And being where I was in the power play, it uh, it definitely made a made it easier on me.
Back here on the Prospect Show, the first ever installment of the Prospect Show with Connor Geeky, second overall draft pick in the WHL Bantam Draft in 2019 for the Winnipeg Ice. And I was talking to Connor about his first season with the Bantam AAA Yellowhead Chiefs in the first part of this interview. And now we're going to move into his second season with the Bantam Chiefs. And you put up insane numbers in that season, as mentioned previously in this interview. You had, I mean, 86 points, 49 goals, 37 assists, and 31 games played. And you didn't get to play all the games in that season. Was that due to you being injured? Uh, actually, it was for uh, the Canada Games team. Uh, the For the 03 group, I got lucky enough to underage for that, so that's partially why I missed what was that like being able to compete at the Canada Games as an underage player? Uh, obviously, uh, it's pretty special. You always dream of wearing the M, and obviously, my brother Noah went through it. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, he went through it, so it's a huge accomplishment for me to try and uh, match him. Obviously, super competitive, so trying to match him was super good. And uh, yeah, we had a great team there too. We always uh, we always got to compete together, and it was an honor. What did you learn from that tournament back then? Obviously, you being an underage player coming in, playing with a bunch of this top talent, the, the best players from around Manitoba playing against the best players from around other provinces. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was different again, like I said, uh, in the Bantam. Uh, my first year in Bantam, not getting the points. That was huge. Again, uh, mm-hmm. normally I'm used to kind of rattling off a couple goals here and there, but... Uh, didn't uh, didn't actually get the success I really uh, wanted to in the first couple of games, but then started to find my groove as I got going. So I got uh, that was really good. And how did you guys end up doing in that tournament? I think we got fifth. Actually, I'm qu- I'm pretty sure I think we uh, beat Nova Scotia. Nice, nice, and I mean a great experience at such a young age. And you had a heck of a season in that year in Bantam, of course, mentioned before with the 86 points. The 49 goals and you led the west division the u15 west division that year in both goals and points you led your team in goals and points again uh could you speak about the the off-season work that maybe you put in that year to have the type of season you did back in 2018-19 yeah i mean obviously that's kind of when i started getting into the training side of things not not heavy obviously just kind of the body weight stuff right the generics but what uh, really changed for me, I think I grew into my body a little more. Uh, I was used to the league being able to uh, be a second-year player and have that much impact. Uh, it was very, uh, very special to me. And throughout the summer, I really just played baseball most of the time. So I took my mind off hockey, and playing two sports to me is a huge, huge impact on your hockey game. So, yeah, that's pretty much that's all I really did was play baseball and just not really worry about hockey too much. How would you say that playing baseball really generated to maybe some different skills out on the ice? Yeah, I mean, hand-eye coordination. I think hitting a baseball is probably the hardest thing to do in a sport, right? Coming in at you 90 miles per hour, obviously. Yeah. That's uh, that's not how fast they're coming in on me. But, uh, yeah, I think hand-eye coordination and just being able to take your mind off hockey. I mean, a lot of people uh, – our hockey throughout the years and I got nothing against that but uh for me and my family we like to compete in other sports and try and uh try and do some damage in baseball too and you spoke about how you did some off-season training stuff like strength training and stuff like that did you have a chance to train with your brothers that year yeah I trained with Morgan most of the year just because he uh he had a good fitness plan that year too so it kind of fit my uh my body type perfect Morgan, of course, getting drafted 67th overall by the Carolina Hurricanes back in 2017 in the NHL entry draft. Just you, you've spoken so much in interviews before. I saw one with the uh, WHL Next Generation one that you did about a week ago. You've been on the network with Theo Takulak. You were interviewed by him, I think, a couple times. But you, you've spoken about what a great resource he is. I'm going to ask you the question about. What was like training with him and just the the competitiveness that you guys had with each other in training? Yeah, obviously, uh, he's uh, he's pretty ripped if you ask me. But uh, <laughs> when I was back then, uh, it was always kind of he kind of showed me the ropes a bit, right? He uh, his path was pretty his path was paved pretty good, and uh, he paved it perfect for me. So 
all I could do is just kind of sit back and watch and kind of follow along. And obviously it, uh, it was a huge help. And I, I don't think I would be where I am without him or my other brother in law. In that season with the Yellowhead Chiefs back in 2018-19, improved on your season from the year before, finishing first in the West Division, and of course your point production went up, and it started off with a bang at the very start of the regular season, where you put up an eight-point performance against the Pemna Valley Hawks on September 29th, 2018, just... For you to come in as a second-year player with that program, to be able to put up this game so early on in the season, at the very start of the season, how big of a boost was that for your confidence going forward? Yeah, it was it was huge. I mean, uh, I think it was good just the fact that uh, we got the win out of that season. Uh, normally, we have a couple slow starts uh, during Yellowhead, but uh, it was uh, super good. Uh yeah, PV was kind of a good team too. The Pemmon Valley they uh, they got better as the season went on, so I wouldn't judge uh, wouldn't judge them on uh, that game. But yeah, it was huge for my confidence. And what did you find really stood out about your game in that first game, and how it just translated into your play later on in the season? Uh, I'd say my my shot. Uh, it uh, it got harder throughout the summer, and I think I was just able to kind of shoot where I wanted to put it this time this year around, and just be able to get it off quicker, and obviously uh, be a little more deceptive uh, towards goalies. And what were some of those things that you did to improve the shot throughout the off season? Obviously, there's kind of things you can do. You could just set up a shooting pad in your backyard or wherever. You could be like in a field, something like that. You could shoot in the basement. Did you have a space in particular that you practice your shot? Uh, yeah, I just uh, – we have a nice little outdoor shooting pad there. Me and Morgan go out there, and we used to shoot quite a lot of pucks a day. And if you look at our garage, if you drive by our house, uh, it's pretty, pretty beat up, a lot of missed nets. So that's, uh, that's where I think it all kind of started, just continuously shooting all day, every day. And what was the, the focus of really training with your shot that off season? There's a lot of things you could do. Did you focus on power, the quick release, or just accuracy, or all of those things? I think it was more accuracy for me. I've always kind of grown up with a hard shot, but uh, if you ask anyone I've ever played with or got coached by, I used to miss the net quite a lot. So I think accuracy was a huge part in that uh, going through the summer. And how would you say your your overall game grew throughout that year? Your shot obviously got better being able to lead the league in goals with 49 goals. But were there other parts in your game that improved that you saw that you took a liking to? Yeah, my defensive play definitely uh, definitely stood out at times. Uh, obviously, being able to carry the puck uh, – from one side of the end to the other was a huge factor, but I got to be in the right spot to get that puck, right? So defense for sure. And like I said, scoring all those goals and getting all the defensive pucks, like we need to have a good team, right? We had a super strong decor, uh, making quick breakout passes and stuff like that. So that was a huge help to me. And uh, I think just my uh, mental side of the game, just taking a different perspective and not uh, being more disciplined, really. That was the biggest one for me, being disciplined. And how did you grow as a leader throughout that year? Uh, it was more just uh, kind of seeing the experiences we had that year. Obviously, there's a couple incidences where just, you know, our team wasn't putting the puck in the back of the net or we just couldn't bury, we couldn't score, we couldn't win, really. There was a couple times where that crossed through our minds. But I think uh, – Ben Saunderson and Dexter Whittle, obviously being uh, the other two veterans, they uh, they paved the way pretty good for all our young teams. And, I mean, us three uh, tried to be the best leadership group we could. And did you win any team awards in that season or any league awards? Uh, I don't think in Bantam we have league awards. I made it to the all-star all -Star team uh, and won the, the shootout in that, I think. Nice. And – uh, you, you had a chance to score a shootout goal this season with Verdon, and your your hands are another strong point in your game. I mean, you're you're a great playmaker, not only a great goal scorer, but a great playmaker. But was shootout something you you practiced back then? Did you guys practice them in practices at all? Uh, actually, we didn't really uh, practice them too much. I was always the kid that threw their hand up, and that's what I wanted to play. But I think for me, it's just. Uh, I have a lot of confidence. I, I think 
it's kind of like if you go through the legs, I don't think you should do it when you're up 10. I think you should do it when you're down one. Like it's kind of give or take stuff like that. I'll, I'll do anything when I'm one-on-one with a goalie. I'm not, uh, not too shy from that, but, uh, definitely I love shootouts for sure. What are the memories you'll remember the most from your time with the Bantam Chiefs? Definitely uh, the group of guys we had every year. We had a super fun year. It was We were so tight every year and just, yeah, you can't really describe it, how good our team was uh, both years. Uh, just couldn't really pull through, through Provincials the both times. Obviously, we got third in my second year, but what do you do? You can't really do much about it, so you just got to kind of take it to heart and just remember all the guys you had on your team. Yeah, for sure. And those are going to be the memories that you'll always look back at no matter how far you make it in your career is always playing with the boys and that great group of brothers that, you know, the relationships that you built up back then. So we're going to go to our second commercial break here in the show. I've been joined by Connor Geeky. We're going to talk about his path to getting drafted second overall in the WHL band from draft by the Winnipeg ice back in 2019. In just a moment here, we're going to go to our second commercial break right now on the prospect show with Graham Forsyth joined by Connor geeky. Welcome back to the Prospect Show, joined here by Connor Geeky, second pick in the 2019 WHL Bantam Draft by the Winnipeg Ice. And I've been talking to Connor about his Bantam career with the Yellowhead Chiefs, his time playing at the Canada Games with as an underage player. And now we're going to move into his year getting drafted by the Winnipeg Ice in 2019. You obviously had a heck of a season to boost yourself up the charts. Do you remember where you were on any scouting list that year? I don't think I really uh, looked too much at that. I think it was more just uh, playing the game. Like I said, I don't really focus on that type of stuff, so I I really couldn't tell you. And how surprised were you of getting drafted second overall? Was it something you expected or was it a, a nice surprise for you? Yeah, obviously I talked to a couple teams before the draft, and uh, it was it was pretty cool to see how uh, how it all evolved. I guess you could say uh, Winnipeg kind of making all those trades and stuff, right? You can't really uh, describe how you were feeling or what was going through your head. You just kind of all happened, and getting called second overall was definitely something you you don't really expect, but it's always your dream. So that's you can't really describe how you felt. Really, it's just kind of there. It kind of happened. And how did that feel getting announced as a second overall draft pick? They pick Matt Savoie first overall, you go second overall. And just the experience of going up there holding a Winnipeg Ice jersey for the very first time with your name on it. Yeah, that was super cool. Uh, signing, too, was super cool, holding the jersey with uh, the organization. Uh, something I'll never really forget. And getting called number two is just an experience you always wanted. I tried to take it uh, as low key as possible. I just got back from the dentist when they called my name. <laughs> wasn't uh, wasn't watching too hard. And then I think I was off to Babington Provincials after that. So it was kind of a brief little stop in the stop in the way uh, to hear my name. But other than that, it was super good. You know, playing badminton, came back from the dentist. I mean, those are some great draft day memories for sure. Pretty unique if you ask me. But you said you had a chance to talk to multiple teams. And what did you like the most about talking to Winnipeg throughout that whole process? Uh, yeah, I liked all the teams, actually. But uh, Winnipeg kind of stood out because, uh, you know, they're a great organization. I mean, you can't uh, – you can't ask for much more, and they're they're just new to the league, right? So, them moving from Kootenay to Winnipeg is obviously a big difference, and I'd just like to be an impact on whatever happens this next three years. And you're not playing in your hometown exactly, but you're playing in your home province in Winnipeg, Manitoba. How does that feel to be able to continue your playing career in junior at that next level to be playing so close to home? 
Yeah, yeah, it's huge. I mean, a lot of people uh, get homesick and stuff like that, but luckily me, I get to play uh, only three hours away, so it'll be super good for uh, me and my family, them just being able to come out and watch, and super good for me just being able to talk to my friends all the time and always staying in touch with everyone. And obviously you had a chance to go to the camp that year. You played in two preseason games, and you also played in – Seven total regular season games with the team. But going back to camp, what was that like coming in as a rookie with, you know, the the title of being a second overall draft pick for this team? You're the future of this team alongside with Matt Savoie and many others that have been drafted there. But what was going into camp like holding that second overall title? Yeah, it was uh, definitely a big thing to, to, I don't know how to describe it, kind of take on right uh but yeah i was i was ready for it i was super excited uh to get things going with winnipeg and the camp was super good the guys kind of brought me in uh super easy and those seven regular season games were uh super fun too there's lots of good moments there and playing in the home opener was a super cool experience as well and the team just uh they took me in great so i couldn't ask for much more how different was it from playing preseason WHL hockey to playing regular season WHL hockey? Uh, it's it's a lot faster, actually. You normal people uh, don't really understand that regular season is totally different ball game. So huge difference, huge jump. Uh, pace was a lot quicker, but I was I was ready to take on the challenge and had a super fun time. And you played for the U18 AAA Yellowhead Chiefs for the majority of that season. And you ended up playing 26 games with that team, 18 goals, 17 assists, and 35 points. You missed some time due to playing with the ice, obviously getting called up near the near Christmas. And just talk about the – just the – the way you, you grew throughout last year playing in that league and the experiences that you had there. Yeah. Last year, like, like every year I, I say we had a, we had a great group of guys, uh, good coaching staff as well again. And uh, yeah, going through that year, there was a lot of ups and downs that year. I'd say uh, obviously, you know, coming in, trying to prove myself uh, again for being a minor midget, obviously. And, Coming in, had a great group of guys, great team, and obviously came down with uh, an illness, which was mono, obviously. So it was, it sucked, but you can't ask for, uh, you can't ask for everything, right? So yeah. our team, uh, our team did really good, and then when we got to the playoffs, we just uh, couldn't score really. It's a fifty-fifty game, and we played really good hockey and just couldn't bury it. Yeah, those are just the the way the bounces go sometimes. It is a game of inches a lot of the times in playoffs for sure. But uh, dealing with mono, obviously something that no one wants to deal with. But how did you deal with it mentally and just the recovery of that? Yeah, it was uh, off the start. It was super hard for me mentally uh, just because obviously getting me into the youth Olympic team and kind of all having my eyes set on that to go to Switzerland and stuff like that. But I mean, you can't do much about it, right? Like I said, it's, you just kind of got to take it by year and wait till it leaves. You can't, you can't, uh, can't rush anything. So I was lucky enough to take up curling actually sounds really weird, but uh, took up my school curling team and we had a good run to provincials yet again. So it was super good. Yeah. Curling, honestly, uh, one of the many few in my opinion for for myself that actually enjoys watching the game never i played it about once in a outdoor ed gym class but it's it's a fun game for sure it's a hard game too how difficult do you find playing curling yeah it was uh it was different i've always kind of grew up playing curling uh my mom did and uh so did my uncle and my two brothers did just middle years after school curling or whatever but going to provincials was a whole different uh ordeal there uh my skip was gone four years in a row and so did my school team so i kind of had the big shoes to fill but we got to go and watching all those guys who curl every day it's kind of like me playing hockey you know they just absolutely dominate out there and i think it's a great sport moving into your time at the whl cup last season 
Um, you had a chance to play for Team Manitoba, representing your province once again, and you had a chance to wear the C, and you guys ended up making it to the finals and played Saskatchewan. You guys didn't end up winning, but you got a tournament all-star. Uh, you ended up being named a tournament all-star, and you had three goals, four assists, and seven games. Just talk about that experience first of wearing the C for your province. Yeah, obviously, uh... It was it was super special to me. I've always kind of wanted to, you know, be named that uh, that type of guy who's uh, oh he has the captain oh he's got this. But you know, it's a lot more humbling uh, than you think, right? And uh, not many people notice it, and I didn't want to show it that much, right? So I just tried to keep it as basic as possible, and I didn't let it change me uh, one bit. I wouldn't say. Uh, obviously, there's more uh, expectations, but uh, our coach Jeff he. Uh, he really just kind of kept it down and it was all low key from there. And it was kind of just a letter on your Jersey. It didn't really mean anything because the group of guys we had, we were all captains in my mind. And ending up going to the finals against Saskatchewan. And you spoke in that WHL next generation interview about how it was kind of two teams that weren't expected to make it that far. Just playing in a game like that with so much in the line in the WHL cup, playing against guys that you'll probably be playing against for your you know, WHL career. How was that like going up against Saskatchewan in that gold medal game? Yeah, they had uh, they had a super good goalie, uh, Dylan Ernst. Uh, he's uh, he's super good. Uh, he shut the door uh, really well, actually. It was kind of just a game of inches, like you said. It was bounces could go either way. Uh, they got a goal, we kind of got one, and then they got one, and we got one, and they uh, eventually got one, and we just couldn't get the other right. So you can't can't do much about it can't complain uh our team was super great group of guys uh great memories with them and just being able to go to the finals uh for the first time in a while was pretty cool and you had a chance to play with some fantastic talent in that tournament you had a chance to play with tyson zimmer who got picked sixth overall in the year you got drafted denton matechuk who's a D who got drafted 11th overall, Caden Glover, 25th overall pick, and Spencer Penner, who's a defenseman that got picked 29th overall by Seattle. How was that like playing with all this talent, surrounded by all this talent? Yeah, uh, they're uh, they're pretty close buddies of mine, obviously. So going up uh, with them instead of against them was a huge change. Uh, playing with uh, Zim and Denton was super fun for me and honestly we had so much talent on that team we were so deep our fourth line could be our first line it was kind of just a battle of who who worked harder and obviously it kind of showed up uh in the final on how hard we worked and how we got there how would you say that you grew as a player over the course of that tournament and just the the things you took away from that tournament yeah, the first first game, I don't think I I think I got, maybe got one point, even maybe not one. Uh, it was it was different. Uh, bigger ice surface, obviously, so that was that was different. And just playing through all that uh, through against such high skill levels, uh, it, I loved it all. I mean, I could have played terrible and still loved it, right? So it was it was super fun, and against all those great talents who got drafted and stuff like that was. Yeah, it was an honor. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, an honor to not only represent your province, but represent it with the C and playing with all this great talent and you guys being able to be one of those expected unexpected teams to make it to the finals and obviously coming up short. But you guys gave Saskatchewan a great run, for sure, a great run for their money. So just moving back into your season with Yellowhead last year, you come in as – of course, a, a player that's playing against guys that are one year, two years older than you. You know, how how was that like just just adjusting to that game style once again? Yeah, it was super physical off the start. I mean, uh, a lot of guys were up to target me, and I'm totally fine with that. I like to have a little bit of fun myself, too, in the corners. But, yeah, they were – it was super physical and a big – it was kind of a big jump for me, actually, uh, just – because everyone's kind of super physical and it's all everyone's trying to prove themselves right it's either guys in their last year or second year or first year guys uh who are trying to prove themselves to their coaches it's kind of just uh kind of like a scale everyone kind of 
pulls at it each way and it was super good uh i enjoyed the season uh, like so much and yeah and just you know you are gonna have a target on your back because of your resume that you've built up being the second all second overall draft pick in the 2019 draft and it seems like you deal with the pressure very well is that something that's always been with you you being able to handle the pressure like you've been able to handle uh yeah like being the third child uh me and my brothers like to we're super competitive and i'd say just them growing up against them and always trying to beat them really just helped me and you know growing my confidence i've always had confidence at a young age so always kind of having a target on my back has always helped me uh I think it makes me a better player, and I don't think I would be where I'm at today if I didn't have that. And moving back into your regular season with Winnipeg, just the you didn't get a point in any of those games, but definitely a great learning experience for you. What were the things that you learned about the WHL game throughout your short stint there last year? Yeah, you definitely got to play uh, play fast, uh, and you you got to want it. You got to work hard at every shift and. I mean, I had a couple chances here and there, just couldn't bury it, but that was just part of the learning curve and part of growing up and trying to get my work my way into the junior league. And what was that experience like traveling to different places with that team last year, just experiencing the, the travel of junior hockey? Yeah, it, it, I could see it taking a toll on you. I, I was pretty lucky, got only got to travel for three or four games, but it was – it, it could take a toll on you so you gotta you gotta be prepared for that and we had a we had a good bus bus group of guys we like to have some fun play some cards tell some jokes stuff like that so it was, it was really good and i've heard that your your hockey sense is elite just talk about how your hockey sense was able to you know you weren't making an impact on the score sheet out there but just how the your hockey sense would impact different areas of the ice like in the defensive zone and maybe setting up chances in the offensive zone for your teammates uh yeah i think growing up uh my dad's always taught me you can teach skating but you can't teach hockey iq right so going through all the motions and learning all the new plays coming up from uh yellowhead was a huge difference for me but uh, trying to make an impact in the offensive zone, uh, drawing penalties, just little stuff like that, just little ways to help my older guys kind of get a hold of the power player, maybe get a quick breakaway goal or stuff like that, just small little chips and stuff like that, managing pucks. I think that was, uh, that was all I could really, I don't know, bring to the table for offense. Obviously, I had chances, but that was kind of my main goal is kind of manage pucks well and just – kind of stay stable and play good defense what were the messages from the coaches that you got after being sent back to play for yellowhead yeah uh my coach james patrick just kind of said uh just get stronger right uh it, it's all gonna come and i think this uh this off season and all this covid stuff i've had a lot of time to work on my strength and skill and my shot so it was, yeah he that's really all he kind of said uh Obviously wished me luck, and uh, I wish the guys luck, and was hoping to go back, but then COVID kind of shut everything down, so. Yeah, yeah, and COVID-19 just, it's a thorn in the side for sure. <laughs> it's ruined so many things, and I mean, the, the bright side is, it, at least we still get to talk about hockey off the ice, but it's definitely going to be better when you get to get back on the ice, and we get to actually break out, break down some games, but you know, you returned to Yellowhead after having some a, a decent amount, not a huge amount, but a decent seven games under your belt in regular season hockey in the WHL. You come back, you're able to put up, I mean, a goal and an assist in your final two games of the regular season with the Yellowhead. You're able to get ready for the playoffs, and you weren't able to play in the playoffs, the, the normal playoff setting, and Bantam, you 15 West division in that division, but what was it like playing playoff hockey, especially at that level at the U18 AAA level? Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was fun. I mean, we played Southwest our first game and they were a huge rival. So lots of intense uh, gameplay there and lots of scrambling, lots of hacking, chipping, stuff like that. 
uh, great series. Uh, they uh, they won, obviously, and we uh, just couldn't get the bounces at times, but can't do much more about it. It's the way she goes sometimes, Connor. Yeah, it is. Goes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, I mean, you know, you're playing with the bird in this season, and we're going to talk about that when we get back. Uh, from this final commercial break in the show here on the Prospect Show, the first installment, I've been joined by 2019 WHL Bantam Draft second overall pick of the Winnipeg Ice, Connor Geeky, here on Amateur Sports TV. We'll be right back in just a moment, but first, a word from one of our lovely sponsors. At Super 8 Winnipeg West, we have your comfort in mind with free Wi-Fi and free daily Superstart breakfast. We also have guest laundry facilities, a state-of-the-art fitness center, and a jetted hot tub. Sleep well in a spacious guest room equipped with plush new bedding, a 50-inch flat-screen HD TV, microwave, mini refrigerator, and Keurig coffee maker. Or book a suite with a kitchen, ideal for extended stays. Super 8 Winnipeg West, located just inside the perimeter on Portage Avenue. Back here on the Prospect Show with Connor Geeky, 2019 WHL Bantam Draft second overall pick by the Winnipeg Ice. Connor has joined me today, and we've been talking about his time playing with Yellowhead, both at the Bantam and U18 AAA level. Just his time representing Team Manitoba at the WHL Cup. We also spoke briefly about his time playing at the uh, Canada games for team Manitoba as an underage player earlier on in the interview. In the last segment, we talked about just what it was like getting drafted to the WHL and the short amount of time that he spent there playing two preseason games and seven regular season games. And now we're going to move into this season in this final part of this interview with you, Connor, where you're playing for the Verdon Oil Capitals. And you ended up getting your rights traded to Verdon from the Winnipeg Blues Back in September, how did you feel getting that news? Were you shocked? Uh, yeah, it was definitely a bit of a change. Uh, Verdon's always been uh, close to home, though. It, uh, it's been called home for uh, for a while in the MJ just because it's the closest town to me, right? And we have super, there's super good talent there and super good coaching, so I was excited to get things going. And you'd say that's a change that you welcomed? Yeah, I, uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, Obviously, not being able to play in the in uh, Winnipeg to start the season, uh, Verdon kind of brought me in as one of their own, and uh, I really uh, put to, put to use what they offered me. And uh, obviously, it got shut down just like everything else in the world seems to be. So, uh, my time there was super awesome, and I loved all of it. And how was that like bonding with your teammates in the short amount of time you were able to do that on the ice and just off the ice in the dressing room as well? Yeah, I met a lot of new faces there, and uh, it was kind of funny because my brothers played with most of them. So being 16 and being in the same dressing room as uh, guys his age was super, super cool to me, and I loved it. Uh, meeting a bunch of new guys and on the ice, I had a super good line for the entire time I was there and can't really complain. And were there any jokes made about you being little brother coming up here to play with them? Yeah, there was, uh, there was 100% couple jokes being uh, the youngest guy on the team for sure being only 16 and lots of chirps were uh, thrown at me uh, the first couple of weeks yeah and I mean the chirps are all in good fun for sure no <laughs> doubt about that and yeah just going back to the WHL unfortunately the original start date that they were looking for um, was January 8th that got pushed back so not sure when the season is going to start again but just how disappointed did you feel just getting that news and hearing about that start date getting pushed back and not being able to rejoin the ice for your second season? Yeah, it uh, it sucked. Uh, obviously, I wanted to play with them really bad uh, from the start. So uh, I really wish it could have happened, but it's COVID, right? You, like, you can't really describe what it's done to everyone in the hockey community. So you just kind of got to sit back and relax and see what happens. And why did you choose to play in the MJHL instead of going back to the U18 AAA league? Yeah, I mean, I th I just thought it was uh, it was a lot more challenging for me. I really wanted uh, to try and get uh, get a head start on most guys who uh, couldn't play. And I think 
uh, Verdon was the best suited for me just based on the fact that if I'm going to play in Winnipeg, I got to get used to the older guys and the bigger, stronger hitting guys and sometimes the fighters, right? So you kind of got to get used to all those aspects. And I just don't think U18 could have really provided that. Obviously, uh, they had a really strong league. They had a strong league anyways, but I think just MJ was kind of suited best for me. Yeah, and you, you got the skill to be able to play in this league where you're you're young gun playing against guys that are, you know, 20 years old, which is, you know, up to that point. But, I mean, just talking about the the time that you've been able to spend over your hockey career growing as a player. And in an interview last week on WHL Next Generation, you were asked to describe yourself as a player that you are now and you describe yourself as a skilled player you like to shoot the puck decent hands you said you're not the greatest skater i mean your hockey iq has been demonstrated of course you got good vision and you can pass through anything but would you say that your game was always like that up to this point or was it a process of kind of getting all those things and bringing those things all together yeah, I think I've always I've always had those skills from the start. I mean, skating's always been my downfall just because I've been super tall and lanky and haven't really been able to get into my body yet. But I think all those skills, they've always been there from the start. Uh, me and my brother have always been able to shoot the puck uh, pretty well. So I think it's always been there, and I don't think it's ever really changed. Obviously, a little minor tweaks here and there, but definitely, uh, definitely grown up like that. And you always say you're not the greatest skater, but I feel like you've definitely improved throughout the years, obviously adding some speed to your game. But what are some of the things that you've really focused on and worked on in that aspect of the game? Uh, obviously, I've got I've kind of gotten faster uh, in the MJ. I showed it, a, showed it a couple of times, I guess. But for me, it's just working on my strength and my explosiveness because uh, in order to get to the next level, you got to be pretty quick now. I mean, with the hockey the way it is, there's everything's speed, everything's quick. It's getting pucks, burning guys wide, stuff like that. So I think it's just been an all of a mindset to me and just working on my skating for the most part. And you had a chance to play in preseason for Verd, and I ended up watching a highlight where you tapped in a goal in the preseason after a nice nifty pass and played by your teammates. They were able to find you. But what was that like competing in the preseason in the MJHL? Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty cool playing uh, growing up and watching, you know, Verd and uh, Portage and Weiwei. Uh, and obviously being able to score against uh, those teams were – it's kind of it's kind of funny when you think about it because not that long ago I was about eight or ten watching them in the in the RBC Cup or something like that. So it was uh, definitely a growing experience, and I really enjoyed it. And how have you been able to get used to the MJHL style of game throughout the short period of time that you've been able to play there in your first nine games? Uh yeah, it's it's physical. Uh, there's probably a couple times where I've been. Uh, been laying on the ice just from a big hit or being in the wrong spot at the wrong time but I like to I like to compete too so I'm not going to shy away from guys so it was it was huge for me just to get that extra step and hopefully make it an easier jump for uh, Winnipeg and I mean your regular season looking at it from the surface that's not the greatest start to the season, but the fact that you're playing at this level against guys that are way older than you and you're still able to produce points, I mean, how much has that done for your confidence in that short period of time that you've played there? Yeah, it's been uh, super good for me. I, I really enjoyed playing in Verdon. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of chances that I had. I had, I had quite a few, just couldn't bury it, so I was getting frustrated and uh, – the team kind of just said, you know, like, let's just kind of clear your head here. And then when we played against Winkler, uh, I had a chance back door, I think, and I, I completely missed on it. And I was pretty frustrated then, but going out the next shift and getting my first goal, that was, uh, that was the biggest confidence, I think. And you've had some time to really reflect on the time that you've had in the MJ so far this season with, the league being on pause. What have you been focusing on throughout this time, really getting ready for when the season is going to return to action? I think I'm just focusing on uh, keeping my strength, uh, maintaining my skill and being explosive at all times. Uh, just trying to 
keep an edge on other guys and uh, hopefully I can bring something to the table uh, when the league comes back on. And you've been able to keep in contact with the boys? Yeah, 100%. We uh, talked to, talk to most of them, so it's been uh, really good. Yeah, and I know in the MFHL and in a bunch of leagues, teams are having virtual team meetings, virtual team workouts. You guys have been able to do that stuff? Yeah, we definitely had team meetings. Uh, we had one, I think, three or four days ago. And we always have one with uh, Winnipeg, too. I got uh, got one tonight, so it should be good. Yeah, and how, how's that been? Not being able to be with them in person and really work on your guys' games and practices to get ready to play opponents, but how has it been doing this stuff virtually compared to doing it on the ice and just being with them in the dressing room? Uh, yeah, we uh, with Verdon, it's a super, super fun group of guys we like to – like to joke around and all that. So on the Zoom calls, we're not afraid to throw out a chirp here and there during a session or whatever. But yeah, it's obviously a huge difference. Uh, you always want to see the guys and want to play with them on the ice. But uh, unfortunately, COVID again <laughs> seems to be coming up in everyone's conversation. So yeah, it's definitely different, but uh, it's always fun to see the guys. Number 28 for the Vernon Oil Capitals and 2019 second overall WHL Bantam draft pick Connor Geeky joining me in the first ever installment of the Prospect Show here on Amateur Sports TV. Now, we might be back with you guys next week since it is Christmas next Friday. Not sure if there's going to be a show or not. Not sure if I'll be able to get a guest, but stay tuned on the network on our Instagram at AmateurSports.TV or twitter at amateur sports tv on facebook at amateur sports tv for updates if our next installment of the prospect show is going to come out on december 25th christmas evening and that's going to do it for tonight's edition of the show i've been your host graham foresight signing off enjoy the weekend folks i'll be back here on the network for the next installment of coffee with graham on tuesday morning at 10 30 a.m have a good one i'll see you later